Welcome back to the video darkroom. In this video, I'm going to show you two methods to bring PowerPoint slides into Premiere. These methods should work with other slide presentation applications, but I'm using PowerPoint as an example. If you only have a few slides to bring in, then it's probably not worth learning and using a method to do this. Just simply screenshot the slides and, and drag them into Premiere. Uh, that might be the easiest way, but if you've got 50 or 100, and I've had up to 250 slides to be brought into Premiere, then it is definitely worthwhile to learn a systematic, organized and efficient way to do that. And that's what I'm going to show you here. Why would you want to bring slides into Premiere? Well, it could be that you have recorded a presentation and you need to add the slides to that presentation. It may be that it has been filmed and you want to make the slides full screen and put the presenter into a smaller window in the corner or, or it could be the other way around that you just simply want to add the slides in a visible way while focusing on the presenter um, themselves. Premiere doesn't support the import of PowerPoint slides or as far as I know slides from any other presentation application directly so you need to bring them in via an intermediate file that PowerPoint does recognize. And so these two methods are going to use intermediate files in order to uh, bring the slides into Premiere. So we're going to export from PowerPoint to an intermediate file, and then we're going to bring that file into Premiere directly and split it up and use it in the video. So I'm going to show you two ways to do that. The first is to use a combination of Adobe PDF files that you can create directly from PowerPoint. You can convert that into a Photoshop file with all of the slides contained within it and then bring that file directly into Premiere so that you can add all the individual slides to the video. That particular method doesn't provide the opportunity to use builds on the slides. Now, builds are when the elements of a slide appear one by one when that slide um, is presented rather than them appearing all at once. So they kind of build from one up to the final element of the slide. And so that method doesn't allow for that. It presents the slide fully built, as it were. But it's a simple and fast method to do it. And if you don't need builds on your slides, then I recommend that method. The second method is to use MP4 video as the intermediate file. Again, PowerPoint allows you to export your presentation to an MP4 video. There may be a little bit of organization required in order to get the video to play in the right way. So this method is a little bit more complicated, but it does have the advantage that you can bring in the builds that take place and the animations that take place on the individual slides. So if you really need builds, then I recommend the second method, uh, which is to go via MP4 video. But whichever method you decide to use, the starting point is in PowerPoint. So let's get into PowerPoint and prepare the slide presentation and then export it from there. We're in PowerPoint now and the most important thing at this point is to make sure that your slides are thoroughly proofed because it's not easy to go back and make any amendments to them. If you've made a mistake in one of those it's going to have to be exported again and re-imported into Photoshop and then subsequently into Premiere. So best to get them right first time so check your slides thoroughly. Now you can select a number of individual slides if you don't want to export the full set. But in this case, for the first time through, we're going to export the full set of these. So simply go to File and go to Save As. And when you're in Save As, I've already um, created a folder where these slides can go. Um, if you haven't done that, you can create one at this point. And I'm going to change and not save them as a PowerPoint file, but instead save them as a PDF. Now, using the Save As dialog is better than using the Export dialog from the point of view that you get more options here. And if you go to More Options, and again, click on the Options button here, you'll find that there's an option to export just the current slide, a selection of slides that we may have made in PowerPoint, 
or you can export them all or you can export specific slides by giving them uh, a range of numbers um, here. So I'm just going to export them all. I'm going to click on OK and then click on Save. So the slides are being saved at this point. It's been done um, and uh, we can have a quick look in Explorer and you'll see that now we have a, um, as well as a, a PowerPoint file, we now have a PDF file. I'm going to take that PDF file and bring it into Photoshop. So I'll do that by just right clicking on it, selecting Open With and opening in Photoshop 2023. When you do that, you get an import dialog box and um, there's only the first slide selected. So it's important to hold down shift and select all the slides. This is the point at which you can choose the resolution. So you can load them in 4K or you can load them in HD. For this one, I'm just going to load them in HD. So that would be 1920 by 1080. Make sure that you've got color selected as the mode and click OK. Photoshop will now load all the slides as individual documents and um, we want to save each of those as Photoshop files. So I'll go to File and select Close All. I'll check the box that says Apply to All and then close save all the files before closing them. So it asks what kind of file we want to save them as. I think it's easiest just to leave it as the standard Photoshop file. You can change that to JPEG or PNG, but you would have to do that for every individual document. So I'm just going to click Save. And it's going to come up with the same dialog box for each one. You can just simply press Enter on each one as soon as the dialog box appears. This can be a bit tedious if you've got 100 slides to export, but uh, we've only got seven in this case. So we'll save them all. And once they're all saved, then Photoshop will close, as it's doing now, all the documents. And we can move on to the next step, which is to load them back into Photoshop as a stack. So we go to File, we go to Scripts, and Load Files into Stack. We can browse for the files here. It's automatically in the right folder. So I'll just select all of those. Click on the first one. Click on the last one. Holding down Shift. And click on OK. So we've selected them all. And we'll now load them by selecting OK again. So this time Photoshop is loading them all as layers into a single document. Which is actually what we want. So we're going to bring that single document then into Premiere and that reduces the number of files that we have to deal with overall. Photoshop has now just finished um, loading all the files and um, that's all that we need to do except to save it. So we'll save this. It comes up untitled so we'll just call it um, Slide Stack. Slide stack one in case there's more than one to do later on and click save on that. So all we need in Photoshop. I'm just going to um, close that document and um, get rid of Photoshop there. And uh, we're going to go back into Premiere now. So here we are in Premiere. I've already got um, some files in here. I am going to drag this file that we have just created this oh by the way I should say you can get rid of all the intermediate files at this point so let's just select them all press delete and they're gone and all that we need is the slide stack which contains all the files that we need so I'm just going to drag that slide stack into my media bin just going to bring Premiere back to front to give it the focus and you need to make sure that you do not select all layers or merge all layers. We really want them brought in as individual layers. And you can see each individual slide here. We'll click OK on that. Premiere now has imported them. And you'll see that you've got each individual slide at the correct resolution. 
and you can you can start to bring those slides onto your timeline so if i bring that slide onto the timeline here we can then do something such as change its scale down to 50 percent and we can move that that slide to wherever we would like it to be and um, so we could we could display it up here for example alternatively if you want to have the slide to be full resolution let me just delete it out from there and take that slide instead and drop it in below the presenter in this case then I could take the presenter and reduce the resolution there down to say 25% and then we could take the position on that and move it down so you can have the presenter be a little bit further down on the screen I'm not going to play too much of that because it's only going to get confusing so that shows you how you can have the slide full screen and the presenter in a window at the bottom or the other way was to just have the slide not full screen and and just overlay it over the video of the presenter playing so that's that's basically the first technique which is possibly the easiest and shortest but it doesn't include the option to include builds and the second technique does include that option and it involves going through an mp4 file so let's have a look at the second way to do this now we're in PowerPoint again and I have added some animation to this particular slide there is a build on it where each of the lines come in one after the other we can play the slide animation and see just how that works I'm going to export the video to mp4 in such a way that it includes that animation so in order to do that we need to go to export to video that brings up this dialog we can choose the resolution by customizing the export but I'm going to be happy with it exporting to 1080p so we just simply click on export the video and it's doing that to the default folder that's done so I'm going to um, just exit from that we can go in and have a quick look at that you'll see that uh, we now have an mp4 file PowerPoint to Premiere slide so I'm going to bring that into Premiere so let's just bring up Premiere and um, drag that in so I'm going to take that and drag it into slides here and if we look at that you now see that we have the video that is there it should be at the correct resolution and I'm going to go through to slide number four we're just going to go through to going to step through here and type I for marking the in point I'll just let that play pick up that animation oh it went very very quickly onto the next slide so I'll just um, step back a little bit there we go just move forward that's it and make that the out point so I can now just pick up that and drag it onto the timeline and now if I play this PowerPoint slides into Premiere. You'll see that it showed, showed the full animation. If you want that to last longer, you can slow down the video, or or you could at the end, for example, here, if we go there, you could add a frame hold to it, and then you could drag that out, which basically means that after it has finished the animation, yeah. it will stay on the screen a little bit longer so that's how that would work so what you would need to do is go through your video file that you've got and um, each time you want to include a slide you would mark an in point and an out point and then drag that onto your timeline and that way you could include any of the animations that are needed in the video so i hope that you find that helpful those two methods of doing it if you did, I'd really appreciate it if you would give the video a like. It would also be good if you added any comments as to whether you find a better way of doing this or whether you've got any questions or other ideas on bringing PowerPoint into Premiere. Thank you very much for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one.